welcome back uh, to the course on blockchain. Uh, by this time, I guess that uh, you got a good grasp of uh, this blockchain technology and uh, many of its use cases. Uh, so, we have broadly covered into the fundamental building blocks of a blockchain platform. Uh, many of its use cases that uh, myself along with Praveen we have covered from the perspective of uh, industry use cases, the use cases at the government level, the use cases at the financial sectors and many other things. Praveen has also given you uh, many examples of this uh, hyperledger fabric platform through which you can write a smart contract and you have learned that how to write those smart contracts and how to utilize the concept of smart contract for many of the use cases. Uh, so, so far is good. Uh, I guess that uh, by this time you have written, you have started writing your own blockchain application uh, and uh, you have uh, got familiar about this entire smart contract platform and how to build up a smart contract from scratch. But well, uh, although the entire picture looks good, but it is not as good as we are thinking of. So, there are certain glitches, certain shortcoming of the existing platform on blockchain and lots of researches are going on uh, in the academics or as well as in the industry uh, to make the platform more suitable for the application use cases. So, uh, in the next few lectures, we will look into different such use cases which are there on the uh, development of the blockchain platform and how you can uh, perform or how you can participate in this research procedure, what are the different open challenges that people are uh, still facing and people are trying to solve collectively, what are the different scopes of doing research in this uh, blockchain platform. Apart from the general application development, you can always think of a novel application or you can always have a out of the box thinking to. Uh, device or uh, generate or design certain kind of blockchain application. But apart from that, what are the different research challenges which are there at the blockchain system level along with uh, the uh, blockchain implementation and its performance level that we will look into in details. Uh, so, let us uh, start looking into the various research aspects in the blockchain domain. First, we will start with the blockchain consensus algorithm that is there. Uh, so, already we have seen that there are two classes of blockchain environment and uh, like the permissionless blockchain and the private blockchain or the uh, permission blockchain and uh, these two classes of blockchain they use two separate classes of uh, consensus algorithm whereas the permissionless blockchain it uses consensus algorithm based on challenge response based strategy like the proof of work, proof of stake uh, this kind of algorithms whereas the uh, permission model of blockchain, it uses uh, Byzantine fault tolerant based algorithm, the BFT classes of uh, consensus algorithm. So, let us uh, look into the details of that. So, uh, what we have learnt in the basic discussion of uh, blockchain uh, platform, the consensus algorithm, that the permissionless model of blockchain, which is a open environment where anyone can join in the blockchain platform. There we have looked into these different uh, groups of consensus protocols like this proof of work which was the first consensus protocol proposed by Satoshi Nakamoto. Sometime we call it as a Nakamoto consensus then we have looked into the problems of proof of work um, because of this uh, mining share and we have moved into different other uh, consensus protocols to solve the problem of proof of work in terms of mining share and uh, in terms of the resources which are being utilized the power. So, we have looked, uh, we have seen that proof of work is very power hungry and that is the reason we move to the other different classes of protocols for uh, open blockchain or the permissionless blockchain environment like this proof of stake, proof of burn and proof of elapsed time. Similarly, in the permission blockchain environment, we have seen that the entire uh, consensus algorithm, it is primarily governed by different variants of uh, Byzantine fault tolerant protocols. Uh, ranging from standard Byzantine fault tolerant algorithms, the PBFT, the practical Byzantine fault tolerant algorithm and in case of hyperledger indie platform, we have seen another uh, class of BFT algorithm which is called as the redundant Byzantine fault tolerant or RBFT class of algorithms. Now, 
uh, if we compare these two classes of algorithms, the proof of work versus the BFT classes of algorithms. So, this proof of work, they are particularly designed for an open environment based on a challenge response, where the network throws a challenge and the miners they collectively solves that challenge, tries to solve that channel challenge and whoever is first able to give the response, he is able to serialize the block and put the block in the blockchain. So, uh, it works over a large number of nodes in an open environment. So, in that particular aspect, proof of work is scalable in terms of number of nodes, but uh, after a few uh, minutes, you will see that uh, the transaction throughput, that means the number of transaction that can be supported per unit time, say per second, that is very low for proof of work. On the other hand, the PBFT or the Byzantine fault tolerant classes of algorithm, they are closed algorithm. So, uh, you, you have seen that the uh, prepare, pre-prepare and the commit phase uh, in the PBFT algorithm, you need to share the messages among uh, the peers. And uh, in that case, our assumption is the network is closed, everyone knows who are the peer is. So, the primary knows who are the backups as well as the backup knows that who are the other backups and the primaries. And that way, they multicast the messages among that uh, closed group. Uh, but the problem is there that because of this message passing, if the number of nodes in this particular uh, network grows up, then you have to transfer a lot of message. Ideally, the message complexity of a uh, general BFT algorithm is O of n cube, where n is the number of nodes or participating nodes in the network. Uh, so, um, in that particular case, PBFT is uh, not scalable in terms of number of nodes but it can support high transaction throughput because uh, you can include any number of transactions uh, which is possible there and those transactions can get validated and uh, the consensus can get reached. Uh, so, in terms of proof of work scalability, as I have mentioned that proof of work is not very scalable in terms of transaction throughput to see why that uh, proof of work has two magic numbers. The first one is the block frequency. The block frequency indicates that at what frequent uh, you generate the block, which is uh, controlled by the mining difficulty. And as we have seen earlier that we try to ensure that every 10 minutes we will generate uh, one block. So, on average at every 10 minutes one block will get generated. And also it makes a restriction on the block size. So, a block size is restricted into 1 MB as per the uh, original Bitcoin proposal by Satoshi Nakamoto, rather later on it got increased up to 8 MB. Uh, but with this particular standard parameters like the block frequency of 10 minutes and uh, block size of 1 MB, you can see that the transaction throughput uh, can be something like 7 transactions per second uh, with uh, a transaction size close to 200 to 250 bytes. So, you can get around uh, 7 transactions per second uh, at maximum. Uh, so, that way uh, this uh, transaction scalability or the transaction throughput is very low for a proof of work type of uh, algorithm. So, if you just compare with, with a normal financial system where transactions are being done like a Visa or a MasterCard environment, uh, there are around 40 million transactions per second. So, uh, you can think of that well, there is a huge difference between the transaction throughput that proof of work promises with its default uh, setup of this magic numbers and the actual transactions which are being done on a real number in a financial sector on top of Visa and MasterCard. So, uh, in one hand for Visa and MasterCard, you, you need to support around 40 million transactions per second, but proof of work can give you only 7 transactions per second. So, that way proof of work is very limited in terms of transaction scalability. So, it was always a hot topic of research to look into that how you can improve the transaction scalability for a proof of work based system. Well, uh, so uh, there was an interesting paper or interesting system that was uh, uh, proposed or that was uh, this is an interesting paper which is most likely a report uh, that was came from Marco Vukolik. Uh, so, Vukolik is a researcher at uh, IBM Zurich. Uh, so, uh, in this paper the quest for scalable blockchain fabric proof of work versus BFT replication. Uh, so, Vukolik has given this nice diagram that actually puts all the um, all the transacts all the consensus algorithms into a two scale in one dimension in x dimension we have this node scalability. Uh, it says that how many number of nodes this particular uh, 
uh, transaction can support uh, or, or how many number of nodes this particular consensus protocol can support uh, starting from less than 20 nodes to more than 1000 nodes. And in an another axis, the y axis you have the performance in terms of uh, transaction throughput. So, from some less than 100 transaction per second, uh, that means your block commitment latency is very high to some uh, 10k transaction per second where your uh, network latency uh, is um, uh, the prime factor, the block latency is not a prime factor. So, if you look into the uh, PO, POW kind of protocol, the proof of work kind of protocol, proof of work kind of protocol comes into uh, this end where it has good scalability in terms of number of nodes that can be supported, but the scalability is very less in terms of uh, the transaction per second that can be supported. On the other hand, the standard BFT protocols comes into this coordinate, like where it supports uh, uh, good transaction scalability like more than 10k transaction per second, but the number of nodes that can be supported with the standard BFT protocol, it is typically more less than 20 number of nodes. So, there were multiple variants uh, that came from both this direction and this direction where people have tried to uh, find out a scalable way of having consensus in a blockchain environment. So, there are multiple variant of uh, BFT that was being proposed, one is this parallel BFT. So, the RBFT that uh, the RBFT algorithm that we have seen uh, in the context of Hyperledger Indy that is a parallel BFT algorithm, uh, then you have the optimistic BFT, hybrid BFT, randomized BFT or these different BFT classes of protocols uh, on the that those are kind of uh, protocols which actually um, uh, which actually uh, make uh, modification or make amendments on top of the standard BFT protocol to make it more scalable in terms of number of nodes that can be supported. Uh, on the other hand, for the proof of work based protocol, people are also looking into how you can increase the performance of a proof of work based protocol. So, in that direction, there are uh, multiple other attempts like this ghost POW, uh, this uh, block DAG, the Bitcoin NG. So, we look into Bitcoin NG in details, the Stellar consensus protocol. So, multiple such consensus protocol uh, came into existence from the researchers at various level, uh, they try to find out a proof of work based protocol which uh, will help you to achieve more transaction scalability compared to the standard Nakamoto consensus. So, the standard proof of work protocol will term it as a Nakamoto consensus that was proposed by Satoshi Nakamoto and there are these multiple variants of proof of work. Uh, so, with this uh, scalability problem in um, uh, proof of work and PBFT, so both are scalable in one um, one dimension, but it is not scalable in another direction or another dimension. It is either scalable in terms of number of nodes that can be supported, but uh, not scalable uh, in terms of uh, uh, transaction throughput or the performance or the vice versa. Um, so, uh, this kind of uh, approaches or various kind of approaches uh, are coming from the research domains both from academia as, as well as from industry that how you can make this blockchain consensus protocol more scalable. So, uh, another issues that was uh, there uh, where we can compare the performance of proof of work and PBFT in terms of consensus finality. So, let us see what is uh, consensus finality is the definition which was given by Bukolik uh, in that paper in 2015 paper that uh, if a correct node P appends block B to its copy of blockchain before appending block B prime, then no correct node Q appends block B prime before B to its copy of blockchain. So, it is just like that if you have this particular block in a blockchain followed by another block say this is a block 10 and this is block 11, then every correct nodes, every correct node in the network will append block 11 after block 10. So, that is the concept of consensus finality which ensures that there is always a total ordering among the blocks. There is always a total ordering among the blocks. So, this total ordering ensures that well um, whatever transactions which are there on top of these blocks, 
they are indeed serializable and that serializability has been accepted by all the nodes in the network. But interestingly, if you look into the proof of work based uh, protocol, so this proof of work inherently it is a randomized protocol. Why we call it a randomized? That a challenge is thrown by the system that you have to generate certain hash value based on a set of given constraint like you have to include the previous block hash, the uh, Merkle root and you have to find out a nonce uh, with a constraint that the generated hash will be less than certain target value. Uh, with that particular constraint, every miners they are independently trying to generate the blocks. Now, whenever they are independently trying to generate the blocks and with a cryptographic hash function, although the desirable property is that uh, it should be collision free, but uh, theoretically it can never be collision free, collision can always happen. Because collision can always happen with a cryptographic hash function, it may happen that two nodes, two miners at two ends, they come to uh, two different blocks, come with two different blocks with the correct hash value. Now, if it happens, that means you are having the forks in the Bitcoin blockchain. So, if you remember the concept of this forking in Bitcoin blockchain, that means in one block after B10, one node or one miner, it has appended B11, another miner, it has appended say B12. Now, after that, if in the next round, so this was one round, uh, say R1, round 1, this was round 2. Now, at say round 3, if it happens that well, a miner adds up the next block, say B13 after B12, that means this B11, it becomes a fork. So, this B11 becomes a fork and this is never been going to use. So, we always use the longest chain. So, this is the longest chain. So, we always use the longest chain as a part of my uh, blockchain. So, that way uh, what happens that uh, this particular uh, co concept that well you can have for uh, in, in Bitcoin blockchain based on proof of work or based on Nakamoto consensus, it violates this properties of consensus finality. So, the consensus finality says that this ordering of the blocks will always be same. So, all the correct nodes will come to a single chain, there would be no such forks, but because here is for because of this randomized nature of the uh, proof of work algorithm that the probability it always depends on the probability based on the mining difficulty uh, based on this probability and the availability of the computation power certain nodes can generate the blocks and it is always possible that more than two miners generate two different blocks simultaneously uh, this proof of work does not uh, support uh, this consensus finality. On the other hand the BFT protocols they ensure the total ordering of the transaction. So, they ensure consensus finality. So, the BFT protocol if you remember that you had a primary, the primary proposed certain sequence number for every transaction or for every request and uh, all the backups if they agree on that particular sequence number, then that uh, particular request gets committed at the client. So, it says that every uh, transaction that comes with a sequence number which is proposed by the primary. And because of that, you can always ensure the total ordering uh, of the transactions or the total ordering of the request. That way, the BFT class of protocols, they support consensus finality, but proof of work based protocols, they do not support uh, the consensus finality in principle. Well, so based on this, so Vukolik uh, also gives a nice comparison between this proof of work consensus mechanism and BFT based consensus mechanism under multiple parameters. So, let us look into that in uh, uh, briefly. So, in terms of node identity management, the proof of work consensus protocol is open and entirely decentralized. That means, anyone can join in the network and the nodes do not need to reveal their identity uh, to others. So, it is an open environment. On the other hand, the BFT consensus protocols, they are applied on a permissioned environment because it relies on the message passing architecture, you need to know that who are the other backups in the system, the primary needs to know that who are the other backups in the system and every backup needs to know who are the other backups in the system as well as the primary. So, the identity of every node needs to be available to 
others. So here identity means in terms of message passing, it may be like the IP address of that node. Even if you do not know whether it is Bob and Alice, at least you know the IP address through which uh, you need to communicate with that uh, particular machine. So that is why it is for a closed environment, the BFT consensus protocols are primarily designed for a closed environment and we can apply it in the permission blockchain settings. In terms of consensus finality, as we have discussed um, just now that um, proof of work consensus does not support consensus finality, whereas uh, BFT based consensus support um, consensus finality. In terms of scalability, in terms of number of nodes, proof of work perform very good, it can support thousands number of nodes, whereas BFT is limited. Uh, although the researchers do not or have not explored um, the scalability of uh, BFT based protocols uh, practically in a practical aspect. So, most of the practical implementation of the BFT consensus protocols, they have been tested only up to some 20 number of nodes. So, uh, the existing research paper, they, papers, they have not went beyond that. In terms of number of client support uh, from the scalability aspect, both of them are excellent. So, proof of work consensus can support th thousands of clients at the same time BFT can support thousands of clients. In terms of performance like throughput like the transaction of second uh, transactions per second that you are going to support proof of work consensus is limited uh, due to the possible of chain forks. So, you need to wait for certain amount of time uh, whereas the BFT consensus they perform very good. So, you can support tens of thousands of transactions per second. In terms of latency. Um, proof of work consensus has a high latency because uh, you need to solve that particular challenge uh, based on the mining difficulty. So, the block commitment time depends on the mining difficulty. If your mining difficulty is high, you have to wait for a large amount of time. But on the other hand, BFT consensus performs very good in this uh, particular aspect. So, it matches on the network latency. So, it only depends on the network latency. Um, uh, the, the consensus time. So, if you have n number of nodes and you need to do O of n cube message passing. So, the amount of time that you have to do uh, for O of n cube message passing just based on the network latency within that time you will be able to commit a block and in general it is in the order of a uh, few seconds. In terms of power consumption, the power consumption uh, aspect of uh, proof of work consensus is very poor because you have seen that proof of work waste huge amount of energy. Uh, you are you are uh, randomly generating the norms or just iterating over the norms to find out the required hash value and there is no guarantee that every miner will get a hash value. Indeed, only a handful of miners, only one or two miners will be able to get the uh, norms, uh, get the norms value and in that uh, blockchain.info website, uh, the statistics that we have seen a few days back uh, that um, Nowadays, most of the time, only one um, uh, one miner or a mining pool that uh, owns or that gets uh, uh, the correct block. So, all other mining pools who are doing the mining parallelly, uh, they are not able to successfully generate uh, the particular block. So, a huge amount of power gets wasted. But in terms of power consumption, again, BFT consensus is very good because you have to just uh, do a certain level of message passing. Now, uh, for an adversary, the tolerating power is in case of proof of work consensus, it is less than equal to 20 percent of the computing power uh, for generating a hash. If you have more than 25 percent of the computing power with high probability at every different round that particular miner will win the case and that way uh, that miner may have the ability to control the uh, entire blockchain network. So, until an adversary have less than 25 percent of uh, the total mining power that is required, the system will work perfectly. On the other hand, um, for BFT consensus you require less than 33 percent of the voting power. Uh, so, if you remember that if there are f number of faulty nodes, then you require uh, 3a plus 1 number of total number of nodes in case of your PBFT protocol which um, uh, ensures that uh, if you you, you can have th less than 33 percent of the voting power, uh, you will be happy to um, get a consensus. Now, uh, in terms of network synchrony assumptions, uh, proof of work depends on the physical clock timestamps for block validity. 
so you need to have uh, uh, synchronization among the physical clocks at different machines. Uh, otherwise, if your machine clock is too old, uh, it may put a old timestamp to your, to your block which may not get accepted by other nodes in the network. Uh, but in case of BFT consensus, we do not have any constraint on terms of uh, this uh, network synchrony assumptions. Uh, but uh, uh, for safety, uh, you do not require synchrony in case of PBFT algorithm as you have seen, but for liveness you require certain amount of synchrony. So, if you remember the PBFT algorithm, uh, PBFT algorithm uses synchrony for uh, only for ensuring liveness, but for safety there is no such uh, synchrony assumptions. Uh, on, the, on the same line, uh, if you remember the, uh, if you remember the uh, that principle like in a pure asynchronous network, uh, it is impossible to reach in a consensus if uh, even if one node is faulty. So, uh, with this impossibility principle, uh, we, you, we cannot have a system where the system is complete asynchronous or pure asynchronous till you are able to reach to the consensus. Uh, so, that is why the PBFT algorithm as we discussed in the last class that um, it do not have any such uh, assumption in terms of synchronization assumption uh, with respect to consensus safety, but for liveness it requires the synchronization assumption. Uh, for the correctness proof, we have nice theoretical proofs for the PBFT algorithms and I encourage all of you to go to the PBFT paper to look into the proof. We have discussed it during the lecture very briefly to make it simple. But, uh, whoever is more interested in knowing the distributed system concept and going in depth of that uh, particular uh, concept of the theoretical proof behind the PBFT algorithm, you are encouraged to look into the PBFT paper. But for proof of work consensus, we do not have uh, any such uh, theoretical proof, which says that uh, uh, proof of work will always be able to provide a good consensus in the system. And indeed, uh, proof of work is basically a uh, probabilistic protocol. Well, uh, so uh, with this uh, I will uh, stop today's lecture. Uh, in tomorrow's lecture, we will look into uh, one uh, enhancement over the Bitcoin protocol which is called as the Bitcoin NG. So, this Bitcoin NG is developed on the top of this proof of work mechanism uh, to ensure a little bit more scalability in uh, comparison. Uh, with the standard proof of work based protocol. Uh, so, in the next class, we will look into the BFT protocol uh, in details. So, thank you all for attending today's lecture.